Swamp, the giant that the head ball coach awakened, one that thrived in urban renewal, and now one where only the Gators get out alive. There's nothing quite like a great rivalry matchup in college football. The bitterness, the intensity, the lifetime of memories that will come as a result of what we're about to see in this one. As we'll see the number 23 team in the country, the Miami Hurricanes, taking on a team from the SEC, the Florida Gators. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, David Pollock, and Jesse Palmer with me. Guys, it's time to get it going. The Canes will kick it away to start us off. The returner will field it and try to get some field position. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. Florida's offense is on the field for the first time today. There are always butterflies to start a game, but when you have a rivalry like this, the adrenaline is pumping on overdrive, guys. They aren't all the same. We say that, but we know differently. The blood is boiling. The temperature is hot. Jesse, you want this week more than most. Yeah, Dave, we played in these games before. Everything just seems to be heightened, right? The game seems to be moving faster. The crowd noise feels louder. Your composure will be tested early in a game like this. This offense set up with a second and short. One back in the backfield. He gets the carry. The Gators will keep this drive going. Mr. Two Bits would be proud. The Gators standing up and hollering for a first down. Now, how does that cheer go? Well, first you have to have the yellow shirt and the stripe tie. And go two bits, four bits, six bits, a dollar. All for the Gators. Stand up and holler. Then they'll line up from the 31 on first down. Back to throw. It's Mertz. How about that play to get a hand in there and force the incompletion? Last time these two got together, it was a tight one, Jesse. Seems like every time these two teams play, the game just feels faster, right? Because it is a rivalry game. There's just a greater sense of urgency when we see these teams match up. Yeah, the fans feel it. They know it. There's so much to it. They think about it all year long. When we talk about the next game on the schedule, they're always looking forward to this one. Nice defensive play to get a hand in there and knock it away. Yeah, and a really good job by the defender, understanding the ball's coming. I got to break on it and go and not try to intercept it and make a bad play. He swats it down to make sure that's an incompletion. A third and long coming up here. From the gun, wants to pass. They've got the play bottled up. Fumble, it's out. Defense swarming on that loose ball. It'll be a turnover. And the defense able to get pressure to the quarterback, and they've got everybody trying to swipe at the football, and the impact on the hit sometimes jars the ball loose. Great job with the pass rush, and a better job forcing a turnover. This crowd, full throat, splitting the eardrums and letting them know it's going to be a long day. From the gun, the running back looking for room. Finds just enough room to pick up a couple down to the 26. Yeah, and the running back didn't get much here, but you know, you clearly want to always establish the tempo, run the football, be consistent, make that defense physically meet the challenge. After picking up a couple at second and eight. Leaves it with the back. How about picking up tough yards like that as he gets to the 22? And as an offensive coordinator, you don't need the perfect play with this guy as your running back. He's going to make the play perfect for you because he makes everybody miss. Spin moves, hurdles, stiff arms, speed, whatever it takes to move the sticks and score touchdowns. Muscling ahead on third and short. He gets it oh so close to the first down marker, but I think he's going to be a touch short. Here comes the field goal unit as they'll try to take the three. The kicker will reach for a 36-yard attempt. Between the uprights, it's good. And the first points of the day come on that field goal. Well, you're always going to wonder what would have, could have, should have happened on fourth and inches had they gone for it. But with this kicker, I like taking three points and putting it on the board.
After that last field goal drive, they're set to kick it away. On the run from inside his own five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. The Gators sending the offense back to work. They coughed it up on that last drive, but the defense really bailed them out, holding them to a field goal, Jesse. Yeah, and I think the offense kind of got away from their identity a little bit on that last drive, David. They got to kind of get back to doing what they do. Yeah, and hold on to the football. I mean, defense just did their job. Stopped them, held them to a field goal, limited the damage. Now it's time for the offense to get the momentum going again. One play in this drive, and already out to the 41. It's first down. Looking to throw, it's Mertz. Takes the easy throw in the flat. And oh, did they know that one was coming. They'll knock him down in the backfield. Well, there was really nowhere to go for the quarterback with that football. He's just trying to check it down to his running back, and the defense was there, and they made the play. Let's see what they've got on second down. He's looking to throw. Time to take a shot. And they wanted it all on that incomplete pass. Instead, they're looking at third down. I know you want to prepare for every game the same way, but there's just something different about rivalry games, Jesse. It's because, Reese, I think players are aware that games like this define your legacy as a player. Your record in rivalry games is something that people are going to talk about for years and years down the road. You have got to show up and play your best football in games like this. And the Gators will try to pin them back with the punt. The punter going to get his first work of the afternoon. He'll aim it toward the sideline to try to make it tough on the return team. Here comes the Hurricane offense looking to gather a little more strength. They kicked a field goal on the last drive, Jesse. They've got the lead. Don't make a dumb mistake, but maintain your aggressive play call. Yeah, no doubt. I think it's the play caller right now just taking a look at that script he's got in front of him and finding out where are my playmakers, who can we take advantage of on this defense to get a touchdown here, baby. Yeah, and just keep moving the ball down the field. Just execute a little bit better in the red zone. There's no need to panic. We're moving the football, and we got the lead. They give it to him again. Now, after that run, they're in pretty good shape at the 30-yard line. The counterplay is a great play to mix in with your base concepts. Obviously, everybody flies to the football, flies to the football, bang. Now you pull a guy, you go backside, give him a little counter, keep the defense off balance. This is where you make the money on the drive. Ball at the 30, it's third and short. To the ground to try to move the chains. And the defense had his hands full, but they finally wrestle him down short of the first down. And the Hurricanes will line up to punt it away. On the return, it's Hawkins. And he'll work his way on the return out to the 35-yard line before he stopped. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. They just didn't quite find the rhythm on that last drive, Jesse. They had to punt it. I think they got to be more physical, David. I think up front, they got to do a better job getting blocks and establishing this running game. And how easy does football become if you're the more physical team? If you can threaten the run and then, then run play action, it opens up the whole offense at your disposal. They'll have it at the 49, just across midfield, first and 10. Looking to throw, it's Mertz. He's right on target. They stop him just short of the first down, but it will be second and inches coming up. Well, we knew coming into this game, this offense was going to try and get this receiver involved and get him involved early. So here they are just finding an easy completion. It's not a touchdown, but they just want to get this guy lathered up and get him into a room. They'll try the left side. They get him on the ground after he gets enough to move the sticks. You got to have short area quickness. That running back there doing what it takes to make sure he got that first down. Yeah. 
The Gators will have it first and ten. Might as well run him until they stop him. He's got it again. Ball is loose. Oh, the offense very fortunate to fall on that football. So the officials take a closer look, and the replay booth will overturn the call. To the ground with the back. Not much room to run. Let's give him one to the 33. You know, I think a big part of this isn't necessarily scoring a touchdown on that play, but you're just trying to get your offensive line in the rhythm of the game. Let those big fellas get lathered up. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. On third and long, he has to throw for it. Wide open downfield. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. That's got to feel really good for this quarterback. It's early in the game, so these third downs are big. You're trying to get your offense into a rhythm and a flow. Nice job reading the defense. A beautiful pass. On first down from the 13-yard line. Out of the gun to give to the back. They'll give him four yards on the carry. It's down at the eight-yard line. Going to work in the red zone. They can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. To the air. It's Mertz. And that pass will be jarred loose on second down. That brings up third down. Love the physicality of this secondary on defense. That defender got to the football, was able to separate the receiver from the ball, and did it legally. Beautiful job. Boy, they love to move the sticks here and take a shot at it on first and goal. On third and long, try to convert through the air. And it's caught! Touchdown, Florida! And it's so underrated. The, the relationship between a QB and a wide receiver, the timing, the ability to know where he's going to be and be accurate with the football, that's what leads to nice touchdowns, Jesse. Well, and the chemistry between these two guys has to be great when you're throwing into the game because coverage is going to be tight. The throw might not be perfect, but this is something these two guys have been repping in practice over and over and over, and it's paying dividends now on game day. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point is good, and it's a four-point lead. So the touchdown drive goes 63 yards, and they finish things off with an eight-yard toss for the score. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. Here he comes from inside his own five. And the returner goes down. And here comes that Miami offense back onto the field. Boy, three and out last time, David. They'd like to be more productive this time around. Yeah, in the last drive, nothing really clicked. No rhythm. Got off the field really, really quickly. They need to put something together here. Yeah, David, bad execution on that last drive. So they got to take a collective breath and start playing like a unit on this one. They've got them then deep in their own end, and this crowd trying to help keep them there. They'll turn to Martinez. Weaves his way ahead and gets five out to the 18-yard line. And runs like that are like body blows in a boxing match. Four, five, six-yard gains early turn into 20, 30, 40-yard gains later. They really wear down defenses, and they test their physicality. We've come to the end of the quarter, and it's Florida on top. Guys, let's have a look at the stats as we've played one period. Now to see if these guys can get back in the game in the second quarter. Here comes this home crowd as the defense tries to get off the field on third down. Grabbed in the middle. It's Restrepo. And he's got enough for the first down. It'll be at the 35. He threw that one with some serious heat. This senior quarterback doesn't need a lot of space to get it in there.
They'll snap it on first down from the 35. They'll run it from the gun. You'll take four yards on first down every time, second and six. Small game, I know, but again, the defense knows he's going to run the football. He's willing to run the football, not just drop back and pass, make him out of the run game. You've got to do a lot of this. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. They'll put the tight end in motion. The run from the shotgun. Nice move to pick up yardage. And they'll pick up the first down and mark it at the 47. Just moving those chains the way Frank Gore did back in the day. Frank Gore, Willis McGahee, Edron James, so many elite backs in Miami history. Finding that guy that you can give the ball to that's reliable, important part of the Canes tradition. From the gun, they'll try the middle. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. You know, when you're running counter, those offensive linemen crashing down, they've got to be able to pin those interior D linemen. They couldn't get it done there. They gave up too much penetration, and that led to the tackle for loss. Lost one on that last one. It's second and 11. Martinez on the carry. He's knocked down in the backfield, a swarming defense, and he'll lose seven. Defense did a really good job stringing that one out. You got to see the counter when you start to pull guys understanding. I'm going to spill that ball, make sure it bounces outside, out wide, doesn't come downhill. Great job by the defense understanding that and pursuing to the football. On third and long, no secret what he needs here. And he's not going to get there. The defense stands tall and makes the stop. One of the things I love about this defense is they just have such great awareness, and they're always communicating. They understood the down and distance. They knew exactly what they needed to do to make the tackle to force the punt. That is so well done. And the Caves will call on their punt team. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. And he will boom that punt out of bounds. No chance for a return. Let's see where the officials spot it. Off the play fake on first down. He's got an open man. Excellent job working through the air there, finding a hole in that defense and picking up a first down. I know it's something we take for granted, guys, but the Q did a great job there with the play action fake. He really took his time and sold it. And that's what froze the linebackers in the second level of the defense to help make that completion a whole lot easier. Quickly complete. Nice completion here to this wide receiver. And you're going to see this receiver line up in different spots all over the field all game long. The defense has got to keep their eye on where this guy is because they know he's a big part of this offense's success. Now on second down. They'll run it out of the shotgun. Drag down to the turf, but not before getting the first down. This guy's got a lot of tools in his toolbox toting the rock band. He showed you right there. And when I think back to Florida running backs, Emmett Smith, all-time great. But a guy I played with in Gainesville, Fred Taylor. He was so big, but so fast for a guy his size. He just caused so many problems for the defenses we face. And I think in the SEC today, you've got to be able to run the football if you're going to win games. And this guy right here, he's going to give the Gators a chance. I know it's sexy to throw the football, but if you can pound it away and get these kind of gains, they will just add up, wear the defense down, get first downs, and ultimately get some points. Nine-yard pickup on first down, and now they can take a shot on second and short. One man in the backfield, and he gets it. Down to the 30-yard line where he stopped after a gain of five, and that will be a first down. You don't always have to run the sexy plays, right? It doesn't have to always be up-tempo and fast and spread and doing all this stuff. Sometimes you just lower your shoulder. Sometimes you just run powerfully. You get the first down, and that's all that matters. Leaves it with the running back. And he runs through one tackle and picks up a few. 
This defense has got to get better at tackling in the open field or gang tackling because if you need three or four guys to bring a guy down, <laughs> have fun with that. The big pickup on first down leaves him with second and one. Looking for a man, it's Mertz. Zings it complete to the right. They'll finally put the brakes on him at the three. A big throw, catch and run on that one. And that's why this guy is such a weapon in this offense, because you don't have to throw it far downfield. Just get the ball in his hands. He catches it close to the line of scrimmage, but look what he was able to do after the catch. He gets an explosive play for this offense. Wide out in motion. A jet sweep pass. And he'll be stopped for no gain, still sitting at the three-yard line. Really nice job by the quarterback. Hey, a lot of quarterbacks want to cover. They want to drop back. They're not really about that life. They don't want to be the tackling kind of guy. They're like, yeah, leave that to the linebackers. That dude committed, came up, made a nice tackle. And the D deny them on second and goal. Quarterback touch pass on the jet sweep. And he is stopped, not getting close to the end zone. Line of scrimmage still at the three. I like offenses being creative. I'm not sure if that was the best place to call that play. I think this offense needs to think about just doing things a little bit more by the book. They've got a lot of good playmakers. You don't have to reinvent the wheel this early in the game. The give. And a really short game before he gets a whole bunch of company from the defense. Second quarter might not be gamble time, but inside the three, Palmer, I've got the green light. I'm going for this. I am, too. And you're essentially running a two-point play here, right? You've got a play you practice all week long. That's the play you dial up right here. This is a really big play for both teams. Fourth and goal from the two. Slams ahead. They stop him short of the marker, and they'll turn it over on downs. Listen to this crowd just shaking the girders of this place, trying to help their defense. Working the middle, it's complete. Makes the grab, and he's dragged down. This slot receiver gives defensive coordinators nightmares. You have got to double him virtually on every pass play. He better have safety help over top. Otherwise, this guy's a threat to score every time they throw the ball. Here comes the offense on second down. Oh, picked off. Touchdown, Gator! How about that D coming up with a play like that? The DB saw it. He thought, don't drop it, don't drop it. Then thought, don't get caught, don't get caught. And he didn't. The pick six. Hey, these guys can play offense, too, man. Look at this. I showed you I can be a wide receiver. Coach might split him out at wide receiver next week after making that big play, but defense, great job making the interception, and you're right, doing something with it. Don't just slide down. Don't be content. Take that thing all the way back, brother. He'll try to tack on one more. The kick is up and good and put one more on the lead. They're lining up to kick it off after the pick six, and that defense will come out feeling it. He'll bring it back from inside his five. And he loses the ball deep in his own end. Corral by the kicking team. And this, my friend, is what you call advantageous field position, starting the drive with a first and goal. Now try to pound their way in. Touchdown, Florida! And they add six more to the board with that trip to the house. Well, just as you would expect, that didn't take very long. It didn't, Reese. And you've got to make great field position count. When you've got opportunities, you got to pay it off. And the offense took advantage, scoring a touchdown. Didn't have far to go, but they got the points they needed. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point makes it a 21-3 lead. 
That's taking advantage of a golden opportunity set up with great field position, and they struck quickly for the touchdown. The kickoff team takes the field to boot this one away. Looks like he's going to try to return it. Couldn't find a way to create that broken field as he stopped at the 25. Here comes the Hurricane offense looking to gather a little more strength. Boy, they've been caught in a buzzsaw here in the first half, but maybe a chance to carry some momentum into the break here. It all comes down to this drive right here, Reese. Obviously, this offense hasn't had everything go right for them in the first half, but here's an opportunity, David, to execute some plays, put some throws together, and generate some points. And you're right, Jesse, and this offense needs to start now. Like, we got to get some points on the board, create some momentum, and continue it, because you've dug yourself a significant hole. There's got to be a sense of urgency for this offense right now. They're trailing. They're going to be kicking off to open the second half. So they need points. They need to go tempo. Maybe that last first down gets them a little bit of confidence. From the 44-yard line, the offense snaps it on first down. He's looking to throw it. Under heavy pressure, lets it fly. And good coverage and better hands by the defender to knock it down in the end zone. Well, the quarterback was in a world of trouble there. He was under pressure. He knew he was going to get hit, so he's just trying to get rid of it, but he forced it into double coverage. He's lucky that was only an incompletion. They'll line up for a second down play. Misfired on the last play. They'll go back to the air. Grabbed over the middle. It's a royal. A timeout is called as this offense tries to find a way to get more points on the board before the half. Third down coming up after that completion. Looking to throw for it. Fires one high and deep. And it falls incomplete, but that could have been disastrous. A defender was right there. And money down is where you see defenses really understand where the sticks are, play great pass defense, know what's coming, and get off the field. And the Canes will punt it away on fourth down. Make sure that there's not going to be a return on this one. Ball's out of bounds, and I think they'll mark it right around the 25. Dropping back, it's Mertz. He hurls one deep down the left side. And that one falls incomplete. They tried to go over the top on first down. Second down coming up. DB does an outstanding job here on the deep pass. Locating the football. No P.I. able to swat it away past incomplete. Last incompletion leaves him still sitting at their own 25 with second and 10. He's looking to throw. This time he's got his man. The offense will stop the clock and use one of its timeouts. Well, the receiver was able to make the catch on the slant throw, and then he got north right away. He creased the defense with his speed, picking up extra yardage after catching the slant. Moving the running back, trying to get the D to tip its hand. Grabbed in the backfield, it's Johnson. The defense wouldn't let him loose, and even though it's a completion, they lost yardage. The clock will stop with this timeout from the offense. They'll get a chance to regroup on the sideline. This offense has a second down play. He's looking to throw. Unloads to the wideout. Got his man downfield. Running toward the tape. Touchdown, Gator! And they take it in for six more points. Defense has to be better on the back end. They knew this offense was going to come out, and they were going to challenge them. They were going to try to push the ball vertically down the field. They've now given up two touchdown passes in this game. They have got to shore up their play at the back half. Ready to try the point after. And the extra point gives him a 28-3 lead. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And they cap things off with a touchdown pass from 59 yards out. 
Kickoff team is on the field. They'll try to drive this one deep. Bringing it out. Not nearly as much as he'd hoped when he brought it out of the end zone. He'll be stopped at the 15. And here comes that Miami offense back onto the field. Can't hold on. He had it right down the middle, and he flat dropped it. And now on second down for this offense. Out of the shotgun, they go to the ground. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. We played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Thanks so much, guys. And I need not tell you, rivalry games always bring out a ton of emotion. And no surprise, we saw just that in the first half today. Talk about a first half from that dude out of the backfield. He's been a total game changer. And how many top plays moments have we seen on missed tackles alone? Video game moves from one of the shiftiest players in all of college football. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how this rivalry matchup plays out. The Gators will kick it away to crank up the second half. And he takes this from inside the five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Here comes the Hurricane offense looking to gather a little more strength. Got blown out in the first half and now just desperate to find anything to generate momentum here in the third quarter. It just starts with one play, though. You just need one thing to go right for this offense to start to build that momentum, and then that becomes infectious for the defense, for special teams. Everything can change. It just takes one play. It really can, and it's so strange, and you can't quantify it. I don't know how to describe it as a coach or as a player, but you got to make something happen, and it's got to start on this drive. He's got it on the right. He puts him in business across the 50 into the 46-yard line. It'll be first down. And that's just a great individual effort by the wide receiver. He catches this ball way short of the sticks, but because he's able to make the defender miss, now he's able to get the extra yards and turn that into an explosive play. This offense hasn't found the end zone yet. Starting to move, it's first and 10. Looking to move it through the air. And the physical play there forces the incompletion on first down. And you see those balls in practice sometimes. They're just off the mark. You don't, you don't know how to control it. You don't know what goes wrong. And sometimes QBs miss, and it's an incompletion. After the quarterback and receiver couldn't connect, it's second and ten. The offense showing motion from the tight end, trying to get a read on the D. Running it to the right. And he has a solid gain before the defense bottles him up. I think one of the hardest things to do is stick to the run when it's not working. But it's those runs right there that are the reason why you have to do it, right? You can't get too one-dimensional. Keep slipping those runs in there. Keep getting a little bit of positive yards. Next thing you know, you'll look up and you might break one of those after you got them a little bit tired. Looking to pass. It's Ward. Got his man quickly. And good blocking in space out there to give him enough room to pick up the first down. Those third and medium calls needed four there, and they got it using the quick passing game. And I think, Reese, on those third and short situations, I think you also know the ball's going to come out quickly. And you got to take away that quick stuff right now, but the QB gets the football, immediately sees the slant. Easy pitch, easy catch, first down. Grab behind the line. It's McCormick. And that was some kind of collision between a couple of big bodies there. And he stopped from getting the first down. 
Really good job working through his progression. You get it to him quickly, and the big tight end has a chance to run a little. And a really good job by the QB throwing an accurate throw. I, I got to hit those guys on the move, on the run, so they can do this. They can catch the football, get upfield, and chew up some extra yards. He knew exactly where he wanted to go with that one, and they've got enough for the first down. You've got to give the O-line a lot of credit there because it gave the receiver time to work all the way across the field on the drag route against zone coverage. Quarterback gets it to him. He's able to turn it up and get a first down. The Hurricanes have it with a first and ten. They'll keep it on the ground. You see all this movement in football now, all the stem and the defensive line. They're sliding right before the snap, creating confusion for the offensive line. Then they're moving back and stunting. Really good job by the defense. Continue to move, continue to stunt, continue to get in the backfield and make this life hard on this run. He's looking for a man on second down, using the quick game. And he strides his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Miami! Great example of how a second half can really change everything for a team. No doubt. First half looked bad. It looked like it was bleak. It looked like it was ugly. But now you're starting to get it turned around. The more drives like this is what's needed. Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. And the extra point cuts the lead to 28-10. They put together an 81-yard drive, and they finish it by firing one in from the 13 for the score. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. On the move from inside is five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. The Gators sending the offense back to work. Off the play fake on first down to throw. A strike downfield. And he's brought down after a huge completion. And a big reason why this team has the lead in this game is because of plays like that. They know they've got firepower throwing the ball. They've got the dudes outside that can make things happen. You saw it in the first half, and you see it here again early in the third quarter. Get a big play like that last one. You flip the field. You change the momentum. Now it's first and 10 from the 38. The give. Able to scrounge three yards out of that one somehow. It's second and seven. You know, it's so important for offenses to want to keep third downs manageable. The way you do that is by having success like that, running the football on first down. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Back to throw, it's Mertz. Finds his big tight end. And he laid the lumber to stop him from getting the first down. I'll say this, man. In college football, you see a lot of bad tackling. You didn't see it right there. That was an awesome job. First off, being there at the point of attack, once the tight end made the catch, there was no doubt he was going down. Great job form tackle. They'll run for it on third and short. Just outside the red zone as they pick up the first down, they'll spot it at the 22. And listen, the offensive line has to do their job, but a really good job by the running back, understanding where his hole is. Go hit it, get the first down, don't mess around. Nice job following his hole, getting positive yards. And the Gators are on the move. Comes out throwing on first down. Got it! Touchdown, Florida! And the punishment has been extended. Now they've got a little breathing room. They are in firm control of this game, guys. But you never want to let up in a rivalry game. Because it only takes one play. We know how much of a factor momentum can be in these types of rivalry games, David. So this game's still far from over. And this is where my leadership and my experience comes into play. When you got guys that have been through these fires, been through these rivalry games, you know the swings happen quick. Now you got to swing it back your way. 
They'll try to tack one more on their score. And the extra point splits the uprights, and they're up 35 to 10. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And the scoring play comes on a touchdown pass from 22 yards out. The kickoff team out there and ready to go. He'll start the return inside his five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. And here comes that Miami offense back onto the field. From the gun, running back gets to give. He kept those legs moving, got three out to the 19. It's just so nice to know you can start off on first down with positive plays. Positive yards, hand the football off, set up a good second down. Got three on first down at second and seven. To throw, it's Ward. And the pass is incomplete, jarred loose by the hit. They couldn't make the connection on second down. Now a third and seven to keep the drive alive. Looking to throw. Safe completion on the screen. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. And there you go. You see, you don't have to throw bombs to get big plays in the passing game. Just screen it to your running back. As soon as he catches it, he gets upfield. And how about the downfield blocking by these linemen and the wide receivers as they rip off that explosive play? Got it in the middle. It's Restrepo. They make the stop, trying to pick up just a little bit at a time to get to that first down marker. Well, they execute the end route, and how about the arm strength by the QB? That was an absolute bullet on that completion. And on second down for this offense. He's looking to throw. Got his man in the middle. At the 40, there he goes. Got a lot of running room. Touchdown, Kays! Reeled it in and just made the house call. An unbelievable timing with the quarterback and wide receiver. Get it to him in his hands, right on his frame, where he can run after the catch and do some serious damage. And that's why he's so dangerous, is because of that ability after the catch. For these DBs in this game, you've got to tackle the reception, because if you don't get him down, he's taking it to the house. Lining up to add another. And after the extra point, they trail 35-17. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And they light up the scoreboard covering 65 yards on that touchdown pass. So they got the score. The lead is still 18 as they prepare to kick off. On the run from inside his own five. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. How about that last drive? Just carved him up in the air, David. Yeah, and how about that quarterback? You gave him the ball, and he delivered the goods. Great job taking apart the defense, Jesse, on that last drive. He really did, David. I mean, that was a master class in just reading coverage and being accurate. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. The pull and throw off the RPO. And they make the tackle, but he has plenty for the first down. You know, the defense, they just haven't been able to find an answer for this guy throughout the course of the game. Obviously, he's got two touchdowns, picks up the first down there. They've tried doubling him. They've tried man coverage, zone coverage. Nothing working on defense. They can't stop him. The handoff to Johnson. And it's just simple. Simple first down run, showing your physicality, setting your offense up in a good spot. Yeah. 
Solid pickup of four on first down. It's second and six. They'll leave it with the lone back. And he's to the 48-yard line. That'll be good enough for a first down. You ain't getting by all these guys right up the middle unless your offensive line and your tight ends and everybody is putting in the work up front, committing to blocking. The running back does a great job finding the hole, exploding through. How about that nice, big, huge game? If I'm the OC, let's call that one again. To the air, it's Mertz. Holds it in. Open runway ahead. Touchdown, Gator! And the stomping has commenced. Another touchdown for this guy, and he's starting to get in a groove the way Terry Dean did when he set the single game record with seven touchdowns. Another one. I mean, just putting up stats. This guy's finding the end zone, and he can do it all, just showing it off left and right. When you play in such a physical league like the SEC, and but you got a guy like this that can get an extra first down and really keep those chains moving and score big plays and big touchdowns, good luck stopping him. Well, this defense has tried to find ways to disguise their coverage and mix it up to try to confuse the QB. It's not working, though. With that last completion, he's now got over 300 yards passing. Lining up for the PAT. And with the extra point, they push the lead out a little further. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And the finisher coming on a touchdown pass from 52 yards out. The kickoff unit about to go to work. And he passes on the touchback. Here he comes. I know he thinks he can house every return, but sometimes you just have to take a knee as he stopped at the 14. A little misdirection and the handoff on the counter. Not a lot of room there. Give him a couple to the 16. I never know if it's grammatically correct to say a team is being out physical. You hear it a lot in football, though. That's happening in this game. They are just not getting the push they need all game long up front to have any success when you decide to run it. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. He's looking to throw. Pulls it in. It's George. And they pick up just a few on that completion. We've come to the end of the quarter, and it's Florida on top. And they are starting to pull away as we come to the end of the third quarter. Let's take a look at how we got here. One more quarter to play, and it might be unlikely, but hey, it's college football. Comebacks happen. Wants to throw. It's Ward. Feeling some heat. Pressure in his face, and he lets it fly. And finally, the defense is able to get some pressure on this quarterback. They have been trying all game long different ways to affect him. Weren't able to get there. But on that play, because of the pressure, it affected his accuracy. And that's why the ball falls in. The Canes will send out the punt unit. Fourth time tonight we've seen this guy come on to punt. This is a spot you see many returners try to take a chance, but not this time. Fair catch just inside the 40. They'll give it to Johnson. And they try the middle of this defense, and that is not happening. Well, they're trying to run the football there, just nowhere to go. They got dominated up front at the point of attack. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. He's looking to throw. Caught in the backfield. It's Johnson. And a good job of coverage by that defense. Just a short pickup. Well, it's important in this game, this offense gets the running back involved out in the perimeter in space where he can do some damage. That time they got it to him throwing the football. He picked up a couple of yards, but it gives the defense something to think about. Third down conversions are a huge stat, and this one would be a doozy if they can pull it off. From the gun, they'll try to impose their running game. Picks up just a few before he's brought down, not really willing to take a risk there on third and long. The Gators line up to punt it away. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. Two, 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 
Not going to risk a return here. He'll make the fair catch. Here comes the Hurricane offense looking to gather a little more strength. Last time, David, it was one, two, three kick. The last drive, that three and out, sometimes that puts your defense in a bad spot. And you got to get a drive together here so you don't wear the defense out. I just think, David, too predictable, that last drive. They got to do something here to get this defense on their heels. That completion leaves us with second and medium. Dropping back, it's Ward. Fires to the tight end. He's brought down at the 29 after a 10-yard gain. Well, they pick up the first against zone coverage. I think a big part of this for young quarterbacks out there is if you're going to be throwing into zone coverage, you got to throw on ton. You can't stare down receivers because the entire defense has their eyes on you, so you can't telegraph where the ball's going. You've got to hold it to the very last possible second. Try to freeze defenders with your eyes and then throw the ball into open areas of the field, anticipating where your guy's going to be. Man, we're seeing the tight end used more and more in the passing game. You, you see him moving inside. You see him moving outside. You see him moving in the box to block people. So here they put him in the slot and just have a nice little pitch and catch session. And the Hurricanes have it with a first and ten. He wants to throw it again. Fires to the wideout. All kinds of room to throw that one in there. Ripping through the defense and getting it all the way down to the 24-yard line. Well, I'll give this offense some credit because they've got a lot of fight. There is no quit in them, and they're obviously trailing by a big amount in this game. They haven't had a lot of success, but they're still taking shots, and their players are still out there competing. This offense absolutely humming as they come to the line again. From the gun, the running back has it. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one got to give this defense credit because they have bottled this guy up all game long. He's one of the best running backs in all of college football. Everybody was expecting him to have a big one today. Don't tell that to this defense, though. They've played with great effort. They've gotten hats to the football, and they have been able to shut him down. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. Let's see what they've dialed up on third and long from the 22. They'll turn to Martinez. Oh, there's the ball! Defense just cradling that fumble and securing it. And he's brought down, and his defense gets the ball back for its own. Man, and it was just the impact of the hit that dislodged the football from the ball here. It was a heat-seeking missile coming in there, and he knocked that thing loose. The Gators sending the offense back to work. They missed an opportunity to extend this lead the last time they had it, Jesse. Yeah, they got to be able to regain that momentum, right? Go back to what was working earlier on in this one. And, David, to me, that starts with being the more physical team. No, I definitely agree. Being the more physical team, but understanding the situation of the game. You're still winning. You got the football back. Now put a nice drive together and execute. Got six on first down. Now a lot of options on second and four. They'll keep it on the ground. They want this clock to move. He's stuffed after picking up one to the 23. Looks as if we have an injury on that last play, and we'll take a break to check him out. Offense breaks the huddle. It's third down. They'll try to run for it. He showed it all there. A little elusiveness, a little power, and he's got the first down. Well, they came into this game today knowing that this guy was going to have to leave his mark in this one, Tote the Rock, and he's done that. He's come up with some big plays, and he continues to do that here late at a juncture where they've got to continue running it if they're going to win. It's first and 10 from the 38-yard line. The give to the tailback. And they're able to shove him to the turf as they stop him for a short game. Didn't 
didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. The handoff to Johnson. Not a whole lot of progress made there on the short run. They're strong and they're scrawl. Defensive tackles, they're scrawl. They're such big jokers in the middle where they just lock out those offensive linemen. And running backs, listen, they don't have much of a chance. When you got that 300-plus pound guy grabbing you around the shoulder pad, you tend to go to the ground pretty quickly. They've got some work to do on this third and long from the 40. They'll give it to the back. Shows him the stiff arm. Really nice run. Rips off six on the play, but it brings up a fourth and two. And there's nothing more frustrating than when you get late in the game and you know they're running the football and you don't stop them. It's been that kind of day for this defense. They haven't played well. They're going to have to go to the well. They're going to have to figure some things out. Practice this week, I can promise you, will not be a lot of fun with these coaches. A fairly short distance here toward the sidelines. Not his best work. And here comes that Miami offense back onto the field. It has been a rather forgettable day that's finally coming to a close, David. Yeah, it's been an awful day. I mean, just not, not functioning well on offense. Defense giving up a lot of points. This is a day, Palmer, they'll like to forget. Yeah, you're going to find out a lot about their character right now. Obviously, not what they hoped this would be. And that's demoralizing for a lot of these kids that have worked really hard in practice all week. But at this point here, you're just trying to prove to your coaching staff that you're not going to quit. Scanning the field, it's Ward. He's got his man. They immediately call timeout, trying to preserve every second they can to try to rally here late. Quarterback by himself in the backfield. They'll throw it on first down. Catch in the middle, it's Restrepo. They get him down after he makes the catch. I think in this situation, two minutes, trailing late, I think you got to be thrown to the sticks every time. I don't know if these short completions are going to get it done. You're just not going to have enough time to get down the field. So from a play calling standpoint, you want to think about being a little bit more aggressive. Right on target with that last pass. Now it's second and medium. And it'll be incomplete. This is some physical pass defense. And this defense has put a game together. Like, it is hard to put all the facets of defense together run defense past evens they've been so good man dialed in you could tell they were ready they were fast they were physical they dominated this football game today. from the gun he'll try to throw for it on third down he can't make the catch he was open on the crossing route instead they're facing a fourth down and this is just one of those days, man, where everything has gone wrong, right? Like, they just haven't been in a rhythm. They haven't they haven't got it going and never built the momentum. This is, this is one of those days that you learn from, you try to grow from. A lot of things that we're going to show in the film room that people aren't going to like, but hopefully you can learn from it and do better next time. Finds his man enough for the first. And not much of a fourth down gamble when it's that much of a sure thing, an easy conversion for this offense. That's a great example of the receiver knowing exactly where the first down marker is. He got the depth he needed to get, so once he was able to make the catch, he already knew he had it. Now, a fresh set of downs. Hit hard just as he released it on first down and just couldn't get it to the receiver. It's a nice adjustment by the defense here. With a big lead in the game, you're putting extra DBs on the field, knowing the offense has to throw to get back in this one in the fourth quarter. So your best cover guys on the field, and they force an incompletion on the last one. He'll try it again on second and ten. Getting some heat. And the quarterback is toast back at the 35. Offense takes a timeout. 27 seconds left. This will be the eighth play of the drive, but a great opportunity for the defense to get off the field. Throws to the wideout. Got him downfield. That is exactly what you're looking for when you talk explosive plays. The defense finally able to make the stop. Well, look, that wasn't a touchdown, but that was a massive play for this offense. They needed some momentum. They needed to find a rhythm, and what better way than converting on third down. Awesome job by the quarterback getting through his progression. To the air, it's Ward. 
Not much of a chance there. He just had to get rid of it to avoid the sack. At this point in the game in the fourth quarter, it is going to be tough for this offense to get some completions here because now, trailing by this much, the defense is expecting pass, and they're putting a whole bunch of extra DBs on the field to help them out in coverage. Operating in the red zone here on second down. He's looking to throw. Snags it. And the defense forces him to step out at the three. After this, it'll be a wrap. He's looking to throw on third and short. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Hurricane! A methodical drive that they finish off by tossing it to the tight end. And the tight end, I'll tell you what, this is a position that's evolved so much, right? And you see him move all over the field. It's kind of like, where is Waldo? you got to find this big fella, especially down in the red zone area. This is the guy they're going to target and make the big play, get the touchdown. And he splits the uprights on the extra point. They put it in the end zone with a 12-play scoring drive. And they finish it up with a three-yard scoring toss. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. From inside his own 10, he'll try to help out their field position. A stop to return right there, and that will do it. This one is in the books.